Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 5th of July. India-Israel exchange seven agreements across various sectors to strengthen bilateral cooperation. Kashmiri leaders confront President of Pakistani Kashmir claim no freedom in the region. And four including children killed in separate incidents in Kabul. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday issued a joint statement with Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu. Both leaders also witnessed the exchange of various agreements to foster bilateral ties between the two nations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the second day of his three-day historic visit to Israel on Tuesday held bilateral talks with Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu to boost ties between the two nations. Both the leaders also issued joint statement and witnessed the exchange of seven agreements across various sectors, including setting up of India-Israel Industrial Research and Development and Technological Innovation Fund. Stating that India and Israel have both suffered the violence and hatred spread by terror, Prime Minister Modi said that both the leaders have agreed to do much more together to protect strategic interests and also cooperate to fight growing radicalization. Prime Minister Nathan Yahoo and I have had productive discussions covering an extensive menu of issues not just on areas of bilateral opportunities, but also how our cooperation can help the cause of global peace and stability. He also met Israeli child Moshe Holzberg, the survivor of 2008 Mumbai terror attacks, and his grandparents. Prime Minister Modi earlier in the day met President Reuven Rivlin in Jerusalem and discussed ways to boost relations between the two nations. Later, he visited the Israeli Museum for an exhibition on Indian Jewish heritage. Meanwhile, the President of Pakistan administered Kashmir, Sardar Masood Khan, who was on a visit to London, was interrupted by Kashmiri leaders of Jammu and Kashmir National Awami Party after an event. They asked Khan to remove the word freedom from the name of the occupied territory since there was no freedom for Kashmiris in the region. Embarrassed by the question, Khan asked for the camera to be switched off. I am not sure if you are a person who is 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 in news from Bangladesh now, a lawsuit has been filed against three dead persons and two others for ignoring safety concerns in an explosion near Bangladesh's capital city, Dhaka, late on Monday, killing 13 people. Bangladesh's Home Minister Azadu Zaman Khan Kamal on Wednesday said legal action would be taken if negligence of owner is found in the investigation. A boiler explosion at a garment plant near Bangladesh's capital city, Dhaka, killed at least 13 persons and injured dozens, emergency workers said on Tuesday. The blast occurred while maintenance work was going on at the plant operated by a local Bangladeshi firm, Multifabs. Families scored the scene for missing people as emergency workers continued the rescue operations on Tuesday. Meanwhile, the injured were admitted in hospitals across Dhaka and are undergoing treatment. The 
the explosion at the boiler located in a tin roof shed also partially damaged a nearby three-story factory building. The plant had been shut for 10 days for Eid holidays and was being ready to resume operations on Tuesday when the accident occurred. Moving on to news from Afghanistan, four people including two children were killed in separate blast in Afghan capital Kabul on Wednesday. At least two media workers were killed when a truck bomb was detonated at the entrance of the green zone at Zanbak Square in Kabul city. Aziz Naveen, an employee of Afghan's largest media company Mobi, was killed while on his way to work. In addition, a driver for BBC was killed and other staff members were wounded in the incident. Meanwhile, two children were killed and a woman was wounded when one of the two rockets landed on their house in Police District 5 of Kabul City, eyewitnesses said. A second rocket landed in the same area but no casualties were reported. The police confirmed the incident and are investigating the incident. No group, including the Taliban, has claimed responsibility for the two attacks yet. Meanwhile, a U.S. congressional delegation arrived in Afghanistan on Tuesday after holding discussions with Pakistani officials in Islamabad. They warned that Washington will change its approach towards Pakistan if it fails to tackle militants effectively. The five-member bipartisan delegation from the United States headed by Senator John McCain arrived in Kabul on Tuesday after holding discussions with Pakistani officials in Islamabad. They stressed the need for the elimination of the Taliban and its brutal offshoot Haqqani network and its safe havens in Pakistan. Stating that deployment of additional troops to Afghanistan was needed, they were of the view that more authority should be given to these forces to win the war in the country. The time for a strategy. زمان برای یک راهبرد فرا رسیده است. ما بر راهبردی نیاز داریم تا نقش من را در افغانستان تعریف کنند و این هدف ما را مشخص کند که چگونه از یک جای به جای دیگر می رسیم. The visit by U.S. Senate delegation comes as Pakistan faces mounting criticism for providing sanctuaries to Taliban-linked groups who are plotting attacks in Afghanistan from across the border. The delegation had earlier met Pakistan's Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa on Sunday, where discussions over the regional security situation, including Afghanistan, were held. Staying on news from Afghanistan, due to denial of visa, a group of Afghanistan's all-girl robotics team will compete via video conferencing. The girls will present Afghan's first robot at the Robot Olympics being held in Washington. A group of an all-girl Afghan robotics team prepared on Tuesday to compete via Skype after they were denied entry to the United States for the first International Robot Olympics in Washington. The group of six teenage girls from western Herat province of Afghanistan started robotics class in January and produced their robot within two weeks. After making a 500-mile-long journey to the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, the girls were notified their visa applications had been denied. The robot made by the team was shipped to United States and will be entered in the first global challenge competition being held in Washington, D.C. on July 16th to 18th. Afghanistan is one of the most difficult places in the world for women to get education or find employment outside home. In news from Nepal, Nepal's election commission has started preparation for the third and the final phase of the three-tier polls. This comes after it witnessed enthusiastic participation of voters in the first and second phase of local level elections. Nepal's election commission held a meeting late on Tuesday over the poll situation in the country. Witnessing voters enthusiastically participate in the first and second phase of local elections, the election body is expecting the same for the third phase. The election commission has started the preparation for the final phase of the three-tier polls. The commission also sent a letter to the government with the demand to fortify the electoral body with the electoral laws. 
the government of Nepal only has the time duration of six months to hold the election of the Provincial Council, National Assembly and House of Representatives as the present Constituent Assembly will be dissolved after the first week of January 2018. According to the constitution that promulgated in September 2015, the three-tier election should be held within the first month of 2018. Moving on, an annual Buddhist festival at a famed monastery in India's northern Leh city concluded on Tuesday. The visitors were left enthralled as spectacular master dance performances were presented by the Buddhist monks. Thousands of Buddhist followers and visitors from across the world congregated at the famed Hemis Monastery in India's northern Leh city to witness a spectacular festival which concluded on Tuesday. The two-day festival is held on the 10th day of the Tibetan lunar month to celebrate the birth anniversary of Guru Padmasambhava, the founder of Tibetan Buddhism. As part of the festival, monks performed a sacred mass dance known as Cham. Dressed in vibrant traditional costumes, they left the visitors spellbound as they danced to drum beats and played cymbals. Since many, many years, uh, we have been celebrating this Himitsechu, or we can call it the great festival of Guru Padmasambhava. So today, again, once again, we are celebrating with a uh, full of uh, joy. And, um, and this festival, actually, uh, uh, it's, we are celebrating the birth anniversary of Guru Padmasambhava. It was lovely to watch this festival. It is one of the ancient monasteries of uh, Leh and uh, simply wonderful. Nestled in the Himalayas, Hemis Monastery is the largest and richest in the region. The monastery belongs to the Red Brokpa sector of Buddhist order and was built in the year 1630. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India-Israel exchanges seven agreements across various sectors to strengthen bilateral cooperation. Kashmiri leaders confront President of Pakistani Kashmir, claim no freedom in the region. And four including children killed in separate incidents in Kabul. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.